Hey, it's Joe Lyons from The Automator, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to take an object and shove it into an array, and then also how to convert this whole process into a function. So it's a little bit of both. Both are, um, you know, a little bit advanced. They're, they're not intro, but they're getting there, and it's just some fun stuff to play with. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Here we go. So I got Studio fired up. Let me get down to here, and there we go. So... Uh, this is my default settings. You can get the file here, by the way, if you're interested. It just has my hotkeys for launching and reloading and stuff, and some other, to find some other stuff, but uh, check that out. I have a video on that somewhere. Uh, here, what I have is an object, and notice there's key value pairs, right? So here's the key, here's the value, here's the key, here's the value, here's the key, here's the value, here's the key, here's the value. Notice in this one, I have a word instead of a one. So first, let me break this down of... I often use objects as just a way to dedupe something. So let's say an email address. Usually it's an email address. Here we have first names. Usually it's email addresses. And what's cool about an object is you can't have the same key more than once. It's a great instant way the object automatically dedupes what you're doing, right? Uh, I'm putting a different value here just to show you that, hey, even if you didn't have a one here, because the one's kind of arbitrary. When I have my objects, I'd set a value as a one because you need a value. You need something there to, to, in order it would just fall away because there's no value there. If there's no value there, it doesn't keep anything. So um, I shove in a one when I do that. Uh, but the point here is just to show that this, is, this conversion is going to work. And I didn't look in the form. There's probably a object to array converter. Um, it probably is almost this exact code though, because it's very basic, right? Okay, so you gotta first declare the array, and that's what we're doing here. So we're gonna create a blank array, and then we're gonna loop over our object. This is the OBJ here, and we're gonna loop over it. Actually, you know what, let's let's do this. We're gonna use a make sure this function here to display the OBJ. So let me launch it. And here we can see, so here's the key is Bob, and the one is the value, Joe, one, Susie, two, right? So we're peeking inside. Now you can't do this with a message, a normal message box, right? You have to kind of iterate it over this. We could do a for loop and easily see it because it's a simple object. It's not nested, but uh, this is a, his M function. It's really cool because if it's text, it'll play the text. If it's an object, it'll peek inside it like this. So let's uh, disable that. So we're going to loop over that. And each time we go through this item, the first time um, it's going to be, that's the key, right? So, and, and you know what, let's change this to key. So we're we're using the right terms here. See, in, in, in reality, it becomes just um, the the value in the array in the sense of its equivalent. So we'll, we'll get into this in a minute. We're going to push it into this array. So it loops over these however many times you have key value pairs. And then we're going to display the array function down here. So you know what? Let's, uh, well, let's do this first. Save it. Reload. Run. So now notice dot one is Bob, dot two is Joe, dot three is Susie, and dot four is Tom. So it added each of these things into my array, gives them a new kind of like think of it as a key, right? It's the index value is the key. It's the, um, that's, it automatically gets assigned. So it's not a, an automatic key value pair, but it still has one, right? So that's the key. And then the value, what I was going to say was what's cool about, if I remember correctly, let's, let's do OBJ comma. This should give us both. Yeah, now, what I should have done was put a, uh, here we go, a break between them. I think it automatically does a break if you just leave that blank, but anyway. So here we can see it as the object, and here we can see it as the array, right? So very cool little simple thing. So this is all fun stuff, and the more you play with objects, uh, both uh, you know, objects and arrays, the easier it becomes. However, now let's convert this whole thing into a function that I can then call from somewhere else. I'll call, I'll, sh I'll pass it an object, and then I'll return back an array. All right, so... And by the way, this again, this is exactly how I often build my code. I don't start saying, hey, I'm going to build a function. It's it's I build my code and then I functionalize it. I convert it into a function and I, I look for, well, what are the, the things that need to change, right? What are going to be the parameters or whatever? And what do I want to return from that function? And it's it's just how I build my code often. So first thing I do is, what, what's the name going to be? Um, well, well, let's see. Object to array is what pops in my object to array and now we're it's it's gonna get one parameter and that would be the 
object, right? So I'm going to call this object just to, to have a sample here. And then I'm going to put this down here. So everything right now is going to be inside of our function, right? So this is my function I've defined. And I, I have a lot of tutorials on functions if you haven't played with them. They're incredibly powerful. They're awesome. So right now we've converted this into a function. And if I actually run my code, what's going to happen? Nothing. Why? Well, because I defined a function, but I didn't call a function, right? So here, and even if I did, I don't think it's going to actually, oh, because first off, these two are going to have to be outside because we have to define our object and then we're going to call it. And actually let's change this to object. And we're going to pass the object, well, to the function. So we've got to call it. So now we're calling it. So here is, we're defining the object. We are calling the function object to array, and that's going to jump down to here. I know it's nothing here, but it could be anywhere in the script, right? It's going to do this. And then when it's done, it's going to return back up here. Now there's a little problem with this, but let's uh, first, well, we've got the message box here. So it's going to show us, it should show us both as that's going to get past the array is here. So let's take a look and see what we did. So I'm going to relaunch it and hit my hotkey. Oh, and it comes up blank. So let's see what we did wrong. And this is, again, this is how I do stuff. So um, I declared it here. I passed it here. Oh, I know what I did. So I changed the name of this parameter here, which means I got to be consistent. So that's the first mistake I did. Let's, oh, and I see it down below here. I should have changed this to, oops. There we go. So now it's working in as, and this is also a really, really, really important step is to baby step through it. If you make too many changes at one time, suddenly it doesn't work, but you made like eight changes and you have to try to figure out what you changed. And so what I like to do is to just make one change, you know, um, and test it, make another change, test it. Cause the next step is going to be, Hey, okay, this is, this is a function. Functions have their own scope, right? So if I say right here, um, let's see, it's array. Now another good one to test, that's a box is object. Oops, I forgot my percent sign. So we're gonna say array, right? Because here we have an object, we pass it to this function of the object. It, it builds the array here. We see it right here, right? But when I run this, that works fine. That look, this comes back as zero. Why is that? Well, we didn't return the array. The, functions have scope and it's all local. So these variables are local inside here, which is really cool as long as you understand it. So what we need to do is to, when this returns, and this is um, really what a return is supposed to, I, you're really kind of built for, is we're gonna return this array. Now that is gonna return this array. Um, I know it's the word, but it's also, you know, it's an array, however, it's still, I'm going to save this, reload it. You know, let's, uh, well, I got rid of that message box. So yeah, let's, it's going to jump right to it. It's still zero. Why is that? Well, we didn't, when we called this, we didn't store it, right? It, it returned it, but hey, it just returned it and kind of dropped it in the air, right? It's gone. So what we need to do here is say array colon equals. Now we have a chance at this, right? So, oh, look, it's a one, which means if it's a one, we can use our message box thing again and peek at it. Let's just get rid of this. And now outside of our function, we have the array, we pass the object to it and it turned it into an array, right? So as far as I'm concerned, like, Hey, this is good. One thing we might consider to do is, uh, we're, in my case, usually I'm the one calling my own functions and I don't usually share them. I know it seems crazy because you know, you, you see the stuff I do share. I read a lot of stuff I don't share. Um, uh, but here, Let's say we want to build in some, some tests, some verification stuff. So we're going to use the is object. Um, so let's see here. If not, oops, not. Oops. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying, Hey, if the thing that, if the parameter that gets passed to me, if the contents of that parameter is not an object, 
hey, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna do a message box. So, um, this is expecting an object, you know, please try again. And I'm gonna say, just return here. If I do a return here, it's not gonna continue on through the rest of the function. So, because this is an object, when I run this, hey, it worked great. But what if we change the, the name here to just be a string? And that was a bad example, here we go. And we'll make it kind of look like, uh, like let's just pretend that's kind of, you know, looking like the above. When I run this, hey, this is expecting a string, please try again. And this, this actually returned, we did, like if I put a message box here, So when I rerun this, this is expecting string, please try again. Notice we don't get this message box, right? It comes up here because this is outside of that function, right? So we gotta remember we're coming down here, it hits this, it goes back up to where we were and still goes into this, right? But that would be, um, get rid of that. That's a little bit of error testing to, to say, hey, you know, let's make sure that it's an object. I don't know an easy way to say let's make sure there's key value pairs and that it's not an array um, if someone out here knows if there's a thing that says hey make sure it's not an array um, hopefully you get the idea though of this is how you can create it now what I will end up doing is I'm going to take this code and I'll save it as object to array in my library and then I can call it anywhere I don't have to use an include because it's in my library in your library I have a video on that it talks about you know for auto hockey there's three places by a by default, AutoHockey will search for, unless you're using AutoHockey version two, where you can just put your functions and AutoHockey will automatically search for them. The main one that I use all the time is where AutoHockey is installed. Under that is a LIB folder. That's the one where, where my, all of mine are. So that's where I'll be saving this. And then I can just, you know, use it to convert an object to an array that then whatever I'm passing it to, now it has an array because that's what it was expecting. So hope that helps and wasn't too confusing. Have a great day. Oh, please like. I'd love it if you'd like and subscribe. I'm trying to hit my 6,000th uh, subscriber, so I'd appreciate that. Cheers.